Hey, it's Sam, and as you can see, I'm here talking about the Lunar Notes class that's upcoming. And as you can see, there's a screenshot here. This is from my Instagram, where I plug my name into chat GPT, and it starts talking about who is Sam Jeppy. This new AI or artificial intelligence engine is really taking over the world as Rahu has gone into Ashwini, especially in the sky, we're seeing this emergent technology, this hidden power, which is very much the nature of Ashwini, emerging on the world, suddenly thrust into the consciousness, which is Aries energy. And again, this is very much about the lunar nodes and this energy of Ketu, which really shows this sort of embodied past and this technology and this precision and this mastery. And Rahu is the future, which is creating these words. So really AI is a combination of the embedded or, 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 you know, the, the past technology that has been gathered and concentrated and focused like a laser. Um, you know, the K2 is about the past and used toward a future that is now somewhat uncertain, tricky, a little scary. And so I find this AI to be a very interesting um, way to approach the nodes right now, or as the, um, showing the nodes popping out in our world right now, as I'm about to do this course on the lunar nodes. Now, I also have this, um, this, uh, you know, a few of these things I'm going to go over today, especially this healing myth and the Samudra Mantan, the churning of the milk ocean, and this myth of how the lunar nodes came about, which will also really help you understand why K2 is all of that embodied wisdom of the past, which is the body without the head, and Rahu is the head, almost just sort of typing into, like, sort of frenetically typing. It's like very Rahu, this, this chat GPT, just kind of words coming out from a sort of disembodied source, almost like a disembodied head, like words coming and it's disconnected from the source. Again, typing your name, who is Sam Jeppy? And then it, re and then it returns these, these paragraphs, which are actually really well done. It, it, it does a very good job of explaining how I'm seen or known. Um, uh, it's very interesting. So what we have here in this upcoming course that's going to be happening in um, February, February 18th and the 25th, two Saturdays, um, is I'm going to be going over things like this. In the course, you will learn about the healing myth that comes from the, ch the churning of the milk ocean, which is the Samudra Mantan, which brings about toxicity or purification, transforming that poison into nectar. Again, because in the Samudra Mantan, this poison comes up and becomes the nectar of the gods. But then that nectar had to be distributed like we see in this story, this is Mohini who is distributing the nectar to all the gods. But one of them was a was an Asura called Svarbanu who disguised himself as one of the gods and managed to take a drink. And then once Lord Vishnu recognized that, let fly his discus and cut off the head. And the head is Rahu who goes around, you know, eating and and you know, like um, asserting himself in the world, kind of like this. <laughs> and the body without the head is Ketu, the south note. You see it's this body from the neck down is Ketu, which is most of the being, just like most of your being, most of your being, like 95% of your nature is past life. And not just past life as a human, but as a crab and as a single-celled creature and all the stuff you've forgotten and that heritage and that legacy in your body and in your in your you know in in your physiology in fact i even very recently have also been talking about this nature of rahu and ketu as being related to the dna um this uh has this has also been a very important um part of the class that i'm going to be talking about um is this um, nature of Rahu and Ketu as bringing about this existence through the DNA, literally on the cellular level. Rahu and Ketu rule these opposite places. Um, 
just like you would see here the head and the body these two things that never meet they've been they've been separated from each other the same is true with the dna uh strand and i'm going to be joined by dr malani Iyer to explain that but the thing is is that this churning of the milk ocean also allows us to understand this dichotomy and this split because part of rahu um svarbanu when the head was disconnected he was actually cheated because he was told that um you know that or you know he was lied to um and told that he would be given um this uh you know this uh this a uh, drink of the nectar and then as soon as he got it the head was cut off um and so mohini was sort of tantalizing them um like all of the asuras they were they were supposed to have the Amrita shared with them, but Lord Vishnu didn't actually want to do it. So how this plays out in your life is the Rahu end, the part that is the head trying to grow, is also the part that feels cheated. Deep psychological quality in your that Rahu nature for you is this part of you that feels cheated. Wherever Ketu is, you felt sort of burdened upon. You felt imposed upon. You felt like you had to do something that you didn't want to do and it was at the expense of the thing you really wanted to do so for example you, you, you if if k2 was in the 10th house and rahu was in the fourth house then you got a lot of responsibility put on you as a child it's very much about childhood and rebellion you had a lot of responsibility put on you as a child which would be k2 in the 10th and what you didn't get to do was just explore your heart's desire which is the which is Rahu in the fourth. So you'll rebel. And there's this false choice, this polarizing blindness and ignorance, and this sort of crippling polarity that comes into being, um, and this crippling false choice with the nodes that we're all trying to unwind. And you have to unwind this in your life, or else you're going to constantly be triggered by this blindness and these and this projection projecting this blindness projecting this false choice which literally says like in the case of the fourth and the tenth house if you put any pressure on me then i can't have any happiness it's either i get to be 100 happy with no pressure or i'm completely miserable so again there's this false choice and we have to bring those two things together and the false choice of the nodes is really polarized around this nature where it says I can't have any of this. If you if 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 I get even 1% of this, then I'm not going to have any of that. I can't have any peace if you give me any responsibility. Again, this is that blind projection and polarizing between the 4th and 10th house, but it's through every house axis because the lunar nodes are opposite each other in the chart. You'll have Rahu in one place and then Ketu in the opposite place. So again, you'll see just like in this picture of the Samudra Mantan, it's this pulling. You have the gods on one side pulling and the Asuras on the other side pulling. So in this in this diagram, you see that the gods are here. These light beings are over here. They're pulling on one side, trying to churn the milk ocean. And on the other side, you have the Asuras or what, what, what we would, you know, inarticulately call the demons. It's the forces of light and darkness churning. And again, this is a symbol of your mind churning, your karma churning, the symbols of, of, of the forces of light and darkness. And really, they're the forces of the other world and this world. And again, there's a false choice between the two that we need to reconcile with the lunar nodes. And what we have that, you know, that we can see once Svarbanu, this, this um, you know, this Asura, uh, Svarbanu was one of the intelligent ones. He figured out that the gods were sort of tricking the um, Asuras. And he figured it out and he managed to get in line and get a drink of the nectar. But then he had his head cut off and he became disconnected. But he did get a drink of the nectar and he was put in the sky to be an immortal, just like the gods. So we're going to go over that story in great detail. And again, unwind all of this toxicity and purification and this need to purify because again the toxicity is this toxic these toxic projections and ideas that come around this false choice um and we can sense an enemy we can sense we're very suspicious we're used to 
um, you know, being mistreated and abused or lied to in a certain area of life. Aha, don't, oh, you're not going to trick me. I'm going to do this. And don't, don't try to trick me. I can't have any happiness if you put any responsibility on me, for example, like with that example. In the weekend course, I'm going to go over every planetary axis, you know, Aries, Libra, Taurus, Scorpio, every house axis, first house, seventh house, second house, eighth house, and the blinding obsessions. I'm also going to go over all of these interesting things such as this DNA. Um, I'm going to go over that with Dr. Malani Iyer. That's going to be fantastic. She's a she's a PhD and, and interacts with, you know, gene, you know, a genetic research and the DNA all the time and has mapped this this um, over. We're also going to unwind these stories and these polarities. When you register for the course, you get a bunch of free classes now as well. But really, it helps us to unwind our sort of everyday psychosis. We have this these kind of psychotic sort of polarities in our mind and consciousness. Everybody's a little weird. You know how once you get to know someone, you can see how everybody's a little off on some way and they don't really know it. There's a, like a blind spot that we all kind of have um, and we don't necessarily know it's there. Others can tell us at times that we can see each other's blind spots pretty easily. Again, this is very much about the lunar nodes, these projections and this part where, where we've become disconnected from the heart. Because the other thing is you could see this Rahu being sort of disconnected from the heart. This Ketu is like the rest of the being, which includes the heart, the body. The thing that's really keeping you alive is this Ketu end because it's your entire genetic legacy, your physical body, the genius in your body that keeps everything moving. That's really what Ketu is. It's probably the most overlooked, important aspect of Vedic astrology and most misunderstood. And the Rahu end is often what we focus on. But in many ways, that Rahu end is kind of like this, this chat GPT, just kind of pushing data out there in the world. It's, it's, it's actually built on the engine of the Ketu, all of the intelligence that it's gathered behind the scenes. But the Rahu end, we tend to focus on that. The stuff of the world, the stuff in this lifetime, the stuff we're kind of preoccupied with. So again, this is a very powerful class understand this polarity, this fascination and obsession with this world, this lifetime, these ideas, this identity, which we get lost in. We, we lose ourselves in these things and we have neglected that deeper, that deeper consciousness that's all your past lives, all your past wisdom, even the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of the soul that is K2. So I invite you to join me for this weekend course, um, only $47. You get 10 to 12 hours of classes, um, you know, during the weekend. But even when you register now, you wind up getting hours of bonus classes, four and a half hours on the lunar nodes what, that I taught years ago, this master class with Dr. Malani Iyer, two and a half hours of that. And you also get a mind blowing technique called releasing the serpent. And again, that's when you register now. And then on February 18th and 25th, you get the course. So go ahead and do that. On this weekend course, you'll learn the healing myth related to the Samudra Mantan or the churning of the milk ocean, toxicity or purification, transforming toxicity and poison into nectar with the lunar nodes, blindness and ignorance, the crippling false choice created by the nodes. It's like an everyday psychosis that just seems normal to you faded connections like your parents, your lovers, most of the deep entanglements of your life, sex, drugs, and power, many of the unconscious power plays, charisma, hallucinogenic qualities of other people are seen by the nodes. It's also the Kundalini, the goddess awakening, and nodes are the Kundalini, but exactly how does that work? Also tracking the serpent as it bites and heals. You'll always need to know where the nodal axis is relative to your chart, so there's so much more.